Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about identifiers in C++. We're going to talk about what they are, how you create them, and you know, what the rules are for creating them. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The best way to think about what an identifier is, is it's simply a name that you give to something. So it's a name that you can invent as the programmer, and it's going to represent some element of a program. So a variable name is an example of an identifier. So in C++, you can use whatever variable name you like, so long as you don't use any of the C++ keywords. So keywords are words that are reserved by C++ for specific purposes. And you can't reuse those names for your own purposes. You can see here that I've got a table of the C++ keywords that exist. And you'll notice that they're all lowercase here. So you cannot use any of these names for your identifiers. And when I show this table to my students, I tell them, don't, you know, don't try to memorize this because you're going to learn what each one of these things do as you go along learning C++. That's one thing. Another thing is, is that you want to have names for your variables that indicate what that variable is for. So for example, if I created a variable named X, and in this case, X is the identifier, X is the identifier for a variable or an integer variable. If you just look at that and you look at the, the, the name X, you're like, well, I don't even know what that means. What's the X for? Compare that against something like this, zombies killed. All right, so now you have this descriptive identifier, this descriptive variable name, zombies killed. And so now you know what that variable is for. And speaking of upper and lowercase characters, you can use any combination of uppercase or lowercase characters. So you can see in this example here, I did zombies killed, right? If I hadn't used the uppercase K there, then the variable would look like this. And that's harder to read for a lot of people. We're able to distinguish the fact that there's two words here because we've got that uppercase K. This first example online statements, what's known as camel case, and you have another option that you can use that's common, and that is snake case. And with snake case, everything's lowercase, but you use this underscore in the middle to separate out the word. So this is known as snake case. So it's just a way to make your code easier to read. And you want to have these, like I said, these descriptive variable names, but you also want the variable names to be easily read. And so this is a stylistic tool you can use to make your code easier to read and follow. So let me give you a couple more things to think about. And that is some rules. So no matter which style that you adopt for naming things for your identifiers, there are some rules, all right? So rules. So one rule is that the first character in the identifier has to be the letters A through Z, lowercase, or uppercase A through Z, or an underscore. So the identifier has to start with one of those. Another rule here is that you can use, after that first character, you can use any of the characters A through Z. You can use uppercase A through Z or lowercase A through Z, but you can also use the digits zero through nine or underscores. So after the first character, and I'll give you some examples of these here in a second, but one more thing, uppercase and lowercase are distinct. So if you named a variable all uppercase size, that's not the same thing as naming something all lowercase size, right? So those are two separate distinct identifiers for a variable, for example. So let's take a look at some variable names and what would be legal and what would be illegal. So variable names and is it illegal or legal? Is it syntactically correct or not? Legal or not? So first example we'll take a look at is days of the week. So is that legal? Yes, it is legal because the first character here starts off with a legal character. Remember the first character has to be A through Z, either uppercase or lowercase and it could also be an underscore, so that's okay. And then any character after that can be uppercase A through Z or lowercase A through Z or digits zero through nine or underscore, okay? So that's legal. Let's look at another example. Another example would be 3D drawing, say. 
Okay, is this legal or illegal? This is an illegal identifier because identifiers are not allowed to begin with digits, right? So remember the very first rule we looked at, it has to be A through Z, upper or lowercase, or an underscore. You cannot start an identifier with a digit. So that is illegal. Let's look at one more example. Let's say we had something like this, player number. Is this legal or illegal? This is legal, right? Because it starts with an underscore, that's totally fine. And then the rest of the characters in the identifier are lowercase characters or an underscore. Totally legal according to the second rule. Let's look at one more example here. And that example is going to be October 1972. Is this legal or illegal? This is a legal identifier because the first character begins with an uppercase O, which is permissible according to the first rule here. And then all the remaining characters are combinations of lowercase a through z and the digits zero through nine. So that is legal. And then finally, the last example we'll do here is we will do something like this. Player number five. Is this legal or illegal? Well, this is illegal because the hashtag here is not a valid character. Take a look at our second rule. It says after the first character, you can use a combination of upper and lowercase a through z, digits, or an underscore. So this character right here is not a legal uh, character for your identifier. And then if you tried to declare a variable with that name, you would get an error. See the little red squiggle there? Indicates can't do it. All right, so now you know what a identifier is, you know how to construct them, you know how to use them, and you know a good practice for naming your variables. That is, make sure that you use a descriptive name for your variables. And you also learned how to write your variables or your identifiers in a couple of different styles. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.